has a school, Plowden's Martial Arts in Detroit. Has a lot of good fighters, but actually his daughter and son are probably two of his best right now. Five to three or five to two for Morgan. So five seconds left in the round now, six to two in favor six of Morgan. Two, yeah. It's gonna be a you know big hill for uh, Nicole in the second round. She's got four points. But you know, she's had a good weekend fighting. She's done very well. And, uh, After this category, again, she's one of our younger fighters for the adult competition. It's her first year in adult. And uh, you know, she's doing well. So just a couple look at. Yeah, and there she is trying to go forward. Just Morgan has that experience. So she has to watch the counter. And here's Richard giving his daughter some, uh, some advice. And that's Tom Roberts. He's one of the top trainers uh, in the London area. He's one of the schools, and he's uh, coaching Nicole this evening. cut out for here in the second round. Uh, that leg is so strong from Morgan. I mean, Nicole has to try to stay away from that lead leg and then try to get inside and use her hands. I know that's what her coach was telling her to do. Of course, it's easier said than done, you know, Yeah. <laughs> when you're not in the ring there. And Morgan using that side kick to keep the smaller fighter, Nicole, away from her. So it's now 9-3 with a minute six left. Yeah. And she's yeah, no, getting closer to that 10 point. Yeah, well, it has to be the 10-point spread. So, I mean, yeah, but she is getting closer. And, I mean, like we said in some of the early fights, you know, these fighters are proud. They're going to keep going hard for the two minutes. And when they're behind, you're forced to be aggressive. And that means sometimes you run into punches and kicks and, you know, fall further behind. But you sort of want to lose, you know, trying to score, not just <laughs> hanging back and, and run out the clock. Oh, and there's a nice kick. Yeah, she's one point away from that spread right now. Oh, there she goes. So she's still in there. And the, oh, that makes the 10 point spread. So you know what, it's a great fight for Morgan, but it may be a better fight for Nicole. A young fighter, 19, her first big fight in the adult division. So she has a bright future in the sport. On our left side of the stage, Elise Gorel. And there's that strong Ottawa. leg of Morgan. She just kept that leg going in front of Nicole. Right of stage, really, Nicole just didn't have an answer for that leg uh, this evening. Chelsea Nash. <laughs> now, our second semifinal fight, uh, Elise Gorel is from Duvers Martial Arts here in Ottawa, so a hometown girl against Chelsea Nash, and she's from Hamilton. And Chelsea is uh, probably, uh, I mentioned before, Raymond being pound for pound and the best male fighter in the sport. Chelsea, you say, is pretty much pound for pound the best women's fighter in our sport right okay. now. So she's, you know, going into the event was probably favored to win, and uh, she's in her final four.
So Elise uh, scores first in this match. Again, that's good. Elise has a, a really good left leg uh, kick. You'll notice a lot of the Duvers fighters just have that strong lead leg when they're in there. Uh, their coaches, you know, Earl Horvath is coaching right now, but they're excellent at Duvers, and a lot of the fighters are just so well trained to, to drive that lead leg and fall with the hands. Now what Elise has to watch is when that leg goes down, Chelsea's just so experienced with popping in with her pans right afterwards. Oh, and that's at least a second warning for leaving the ring. So she's got to stay in the center of the ring. How many warnings do you get before you get ducked? On the third warning, Chelsea will start getting points. And when you're fighting someone as good as Chelsea, you can't afford to give away points for stepping out of the ring. Oh, there you go, she's closed at 3-2. Oh, and that was a nice punch. Just great timing, as soon as the leg came down, followed in with That's the hands. The end of round one. One minute on the clock. We have Chelsea Nash in the lead, four to two. On deck, coming up, our junior Lopez Cotto Finals. Here's some of the action. Uh, oh, just see that punch. As soon as the leg comes down, just timing it. And there it is again. Just, uh, you know, this, this sport's all about speed, and it's about timing. It's staying away, you know, from people that kick, trying to go in. And I know we probably have people out there, fans of, you know, UFC, different things, and those fans probably notice that some of the guys that do karate just have uh, a real good uh, knack at distance, you know, staying in, going out, because that's what our sport's about. It's about that speed and, and timing. And, uh, you know, Chelsea's just one of the best at timing that leg, knowing when it's coming down, when to go in. And Chelsea actually, between rounds, I see Jack Felton's come up to coach her. Uh, they're friends. Usually she's coached by her brother, Trevor Nash. Uh, Trevor, they have schools in the Hamilton area, United Family Martial Arts, and they're very successful. And Trevor couldn't make it here this uh, weekend. He had an injury. But uh, Chelsea seems to be doing just fine with uh, Jack coaching her. Chelsea also won our overall women's black belt grand champion, the divisions, uh, earlier today. So she's had a great weekend. I don't think she's lost a match yet. Yeah, so it's 6-2. Yeah, and Elise has to start coming forward now. She has to start using that lead leg. Boy, and Chelsea's just a little too quick right now, it looks like. Yeah, she's getting close to that 10-point spread yeah. as well. And you know, I mean, if that one punch is working, you just stick with it. Oh, and there's the kick. Elise, don't give up. There's a point, so we'll see if Elise can start closing the gap. And you know, at least just does have an answer for that reverse. That we call it a reverse punch off the back or across that right hand that Chelsea right there. I think of the 12 points. I think 10 of them have just been that reverse punch. And that's the 10 point spread. You know, at least was a great fighter, but it just wasn't her night. You know, it's Chelsea's night, and that's going to move Chelsea and Morgan Plowden for the final fight later in the evening, which should be an awesome uh, fight. So now we're going to go into the Junior Elite Weapons Cata Finals. Yep. Uh, but first we'll take a look at some of the highlights from that last uh, bout. Uh, you just see that kick right there. And right there, that was a kind of a trick move. She faked the punch, came in with the back fist, and that actually ended the 10-point spread. So just a great fight. Right now we have our Elite Cata Finals.
Both these gentlemen are going to be doing a weapons form, and right now we have Raven Wiesk. He's from Winnipeg. He's 14 years old. And he's going to be doing a sword form. And he's going to go against Serena Moffat, who will come up next, and then the judges will choose the winner. Yes. Nice form by Raven Weiss. You know, Raven, uh, Raven's a world champion. We actually have divisions for the juniors, and uh, he's gone overseas and competed at the World Karate Championships, WKC. He's done an awesome job. So Serena Mothert coming up next is from Elite Martial Arts here in Ottawa, and she's also going to be doing a sword form. And what the judges are going to look for now is they're watching for balance, for focus, for speed, technique. And now they're going to they're going to stand. They're going to actually choose one or the other. And our winner from Ottawa, Ontario, Serena Moffat. So it's the ladies' uh, night tonight. Serena Moffat yeah. just won that one. Our presenter, Serena. Oh, she forgot she had to go get the trophy. <laughs> yeah. She has a nice Lumbers award. Martial Arts Kanata, on, Kanata, Ontario, Masi Tarakel. Nice job, Serena. Job. And next up, we're going to have our adult men open hand. Coming and up next, we're going to see two different forms. We have Ryan Ronald. Shields, who's going to be doing our a traditional uh, kata. Hamilton, and then Anik Kuzino, who's going to be doing more of an open style kata. Ryan's 23 years old and he trains at United Family Martial Arts in Hamilton.
just see the, the power and the focus and the concentration that these uh, competitors have. Every time they step into a move, everything they do from their toes right up you know, to their hands have to be in a certain position. And if it's not, then they're deducted by the judges. traditional katas, this kata Ansu is over 100 years old. Uh, he didn't make it up, he was taught to, from teacher to student over the years. It's a nice car, very, and very strong, very technical, Canada. precise. Sanfuji, Anik Kuzino. Again, now we have Anik Kuzino, one of our younger adult competitors. She's 18 from Montreal, from Karate Sanfuki. And her instructor, Pierre Sonia, is one of the top uh, forms and instructors in all of Canada. So she's going to be doing an open musical, and you're going to see it's a completely different uh, type of form. So here we go. It's a nice form, a lot of uh, athleticism in that form. And it's going to be tough on the judges because you're looking the best of an open against the best of a traditional, but they'll have to make a decision. We have three votes to two for Ryan Shields. Oh, and our traditional uh, competitor win, Ryan Shields won that. Ryan, please stay on stage. Our presenter from Dugan Martial Arts, Kimville. All right, and we'll be back with the Canadian Open Martial Arts Championships in just a moment. You're watching Rogers TV.
Welcome back to the Canadian Open Martial Arts Championships here at Palais Congress in Gatineau. And uh, now we are going to go into the junior boys team fighting. And each side has three fighters each. So how exactly yeah. does this work? Well, they don't all fight at the same time. Right. Uh, that'd be chaos. But this is uh, ages 13 to 17, the fighters. And what we have is a team from Ontario versus a team from Quebec. And each fighter will be paired off by coaches and there's some strategy involved and they'll fight for two minutes and there'll be a score at the end of the match. At the end of the third match, the total scores of all three matches are added together to determine our winners. And all, so you still have three rounds, two minutes each with a minute break or no, nope, no each, break? No, each fight is actually, sorry, each fight is actually one two minute round. So each fighter on the team will fight one two minute round and at the end of that they'll decide the, the winner from the total points. So a team could actually lose two of the matches by one point but the third fighter could win by three points and his team would win. So it's a true team uh, team sport. And do they, do they pick uh, who they want to match them up against? Yeah, the two coaches will actually will choose. And what they're doing right now is they're sending in uh, Spencer match, Cunningham yeah, from Spencer, London, Ontario. Jeremy Monet from Quebec. And Jeremy Spencer Monet from, from Quebec Ontario. will be the first two fighters in. Uh, Jeremy from Montreal, Quebec. First point, uh, Team Ontario scores first, it's one nothing. Oh, and that was a nice kick by Jeremy Manette, but just not enough on the call. Oh, and there's a nice jump away side kick. And again, as we mentioned over the weekend, we had you know competitors as young as six and under. These are our junior competitors. They all fought in their different respective divisions, but they also qualified for their teams. We had different teams from different areas, Ontario, Quebec. We had a Michigan team as well as a, a team from New England that fought, but these are the two top teams. So just six seconds now left in this match, and it's 3-1. Yeah, but actually these matches, unlike the little one, they're gonna go two minutes. So it's similar to the adults, but they only do the one round as opposed to two, which the adults do. Stop time. Then Jeremy says he had a little slip there. He's just checking uh, the Our foot pad and the leg, make sure he's good to go. Fight. Jeremy Manette's got a nice lead, four to two for his team. Oh, but Spencer's coming back. And you know, you don't want to fall behind that first match. You want to try to be fighting from the lead. You know, and that's why the coaches picked these two fighters to go in first. Time's called. So, there's a brief timeout. Yeah, we have the, sometimes the gloves start to come on. The judges really have to watch, make sure the equipment's always on properly. And time. Oh, six to end five the at the end of the first round six for uh, Team five. Quebec. Team Quebec. Our second match from Quebec, Jeremy Francois versus from Team Ontario. So Justin here's Liu. here's a look at uh, some of the highlights from that first round. Yeah, and Spencer a little bit taller, yeah, trying to use those matches. long arms. Total points to determine the winner of the team fight. Commencing round number two. So all three of the fighters from Team Quebec from Montreal 
Yeah, they're all from Montreal. And right now in the ring from uh, Ottawa is Justin Liu. We actually saw his uh, sister open the show. And he's also, of course, trains at Duverse Martial Arts, representing Ontario. And he's fighting actually right now Jeremy Francoeur, who's from Montreal, KMC Martial Arts. And this match is tied up at one. And that kick was close. And that one they saw for sure. You know, Justin's got to get around this lead leg. Jeremy definitely has a really nice right leg kick. He's a little bit bigger, so Justin's going to have to use his speed, just like he did there, try to create some angles and use his hands. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure for these younger kids, you know, to, to come up, uh, especially on stage at a big event like this. And, Kids, even the adults, usually find when they're on teams, not only, of course, are they fighting for themselves and their school, but they got the pressure of uh, the other fighters in the group. So that's the leg kick you were talking about for the two points. Yeah, two point head kick. So when the referee goes over to talk to him, what's he's he? He's just making sure, because that probably hit a little hard, so he's making sure he's okay. Jeremy's got a nice lead, eight to two, but he's gonna keep being aggressive because it's the overall point. So even though this match might be out of range, he wants to keep building up the points for his team. And, well, it's not gonna happen and here, but could you have the 10 point spread in this type yeah, of fight? That's a good question, uh, Chris. Actually, in the team fights, there is in the spread. So, you know, if there was a mismatch fight, but I mean, right there, you had a, a close fight, just a, maybe a bigger fighter with that good leg and, uh, you know, Justin's a great fighter, just fell behind, but we'll see now if Mitchell Triplett can uh, make up the, the difference. Mitchell Triplett's from London, Ontario. He actually trains at Bernardo Karate, too, and Greg Solomon is from Montreal.